here we go ladies and gentlemen the second women's semi-final is kicking off here on table two danielle randall taking on harriet haynes harriet straight off the back of her win over kirsty lee davis and for those of you that were lucky enough to join me on table three earlier on danielle randall put on one hell of a show from three all to win six free three straight dishes and nearly a fourth got her to the semi-finals Interesting layout in this opening frame. It's really awkward. It's yellows and reds kind of all potentially have available pockets, but they're all kind of tying each other up. I would slightly favour reds in this circumstance, and Harriet does agree with me. Solid opening pot, but hampered by the eight ball. means that she's going to struggle to control this cue ball a little bit more. This red does only go to half a pocket as well, so... Oh, she has got the gap. That's absolutely fine then. She tried to use that yellow to bump out the red that was closest in the middle pocket that's almost to plant with a yellow. Hasn't quite worked out, but she can play the same shot here. And joining me on comms for this one is Danielle's partner, John. John, obviously a great weekend for yourself and seeming like a great weekend for Danielle too. Yeah, well, we'll see how the, um, this match pans out in the end, to be fair. Um, but yeah, she's had a few good performances so far, so we'll see how it goes. Yeah, I mean, I was lucky to commentate on the last game that she played um, when she obviously took on Lucy Smith. You know, things were kind of going against her. It didn't look great for her at 3-2 down. But Lucy made a mistake at 3-2 that let Daniel back in. And boy, did she take advantage of it. Three straight, straight dishes, nearly a fourth. I mean, that's just signs of what she can do. Yeah, I think I think the turning point was obviously that frame that she has um, picked off Lucy missing the finish. But the turning point was actually the 15-second shot clock coming into play. Um, it's freed her up a little bit, I think... Um, yeah, she admits herself she does get bogged down a little bit, overthinking. So um, the shot clock has actually helped her a little bit, I believe. Um, it lets her flow a little bit because I think when she has a bit more time, she does um, think what can go wrong instead of what can go right. So, yeah, you've seen her best performances in them last three, four frames when, uh, when the clock was against her, to be fair. It was a nice shot to think about playing up for this yellow <laughs> now. The only issue is she's slightly wrong-sided on it, so... She will have to remove it, but potential difficult long pot if she does. She's going to try and dig down and screw this. This is a tough shot. Thumped in, though. Slightly hampered on the next yellow. Yeah, that, that is the issue. I've always, I've always tried to help her in sort of uh, making sure she's got a shot on the next, the next ball. Obviously, if she does go and miss that because she's trying too hard to get on it then um, you haven't got a shot and obviously her potting ability as you can see is um, <laughs> her um, strong point in her game. Well the one thing that really stood out especially in that quarter final was just I don't think Danielle missed a long pot in all nine frames. It was just something that constantly got her out of trouble and when you've got that in the locker it doesn't always mean that you have to have that cue ball on a string if you keep making the finishes. Obviously at times it will go wrong but when you're playing the way that she is at the moment she's going to be hard to stop. Yeah, it's, it's obviously a great trait. Obviously, I have it in myself, as you've seen probably yesterday. A few um, mispositional shots um, get you out of trouble a little bit. But eventually, you are going to miss. So the easier finishes you can make, then um, yeah, the easier it is for you going ahead. And this has been a brilliant start for Danielle. Very nice finish off of a Harriet mistake. Gives her the first frame. And obviously Danielle does have a good record against Harriet at the deep end of these tournaments. Obviously she won her first major final against Harriet going back to last season, early doors. And obviously, you know, speaking to Megan in the last game as well, that's definitely boosted her confidence over the last 12 months. Yeah, I think, uh, I think sometimes, obviously, she before that final, she got down on herself a little bit against the top players. Um, 
but now she's um, she knows she's got the ability and now she's about to foul if she carries on with this shot oh, that's a huge error from Danielle well, nobody seems to have called it not even Harriet's noticed it yeah normally if you I'm not <laughs> if you foul on the break yeah normally that is I believe it went in off Unless there would have must have been a foul off the break or something like that. I, I couldn't tell you, John. I'm That's the first time in the comms box I've ever been completely, <laughs> completely puzzled as to what's happened. But it, it, it seems must, like it there must have been an external foul or something like that where, where it's been ball in hand. That's what I can only assume. Yeah, it's a weird one. I mean, as it is, Danielle's got an opportunity here. She is wrong-sided on this yellow, though, so does need a good recovery shot. Yeah, she's got to land in a small gap here by the looks of it and doesn't look like she's got it. I don't know if she can see enough of it to potentially bend it round. It's a possible option for her. She has got a couple of saving graces in this frame. Obviously, those two reds that are tied up near the yellow help her. And also, that red on the right-hand side just gives Harriet some work if she was to get to the table. This is a tough shot to judge on these tables, John, coming off this side cushion like this. Yeah, I think so. It's no, a great hit, though. Actually, a good hit, to be fair. Let's give her half a chance in this frame now. The only thing she didn't want, though, is that yellow kind of just being away from any pocket. Just means that Harriet can roam free at the top end of the table here. And immediately plays a nice cannon to get things kicked off. Promotes that difficult red on the on the right hand side, which means that her only piece of work left now will be those two reds that are stuck together. I think the only thing in Daniel's favour here is Harriet is a very attacking player so you won't see her actually try and get the snooker to make sure she can get the two reds out. She will try and develop the reds herself um, which could obviously result in a miss but knowing how good she is she, the chances are she will actually get this finish. Looks like she's given herself a pretty good... Oh is she a bit straight here? I think she might be. That's not ideal for Harriet there. Obviously, she has got the option to potentially go at it with the final ball, but you're always taking a risk with that. So, a little bit of food for thought for Harriet here. Yeah, she has just opted to roll that in. Has she rolled it too far? Yeah, I think she could have actually played the one by the blue spot to go into the balls. Um, she is, yeah. Yeah, she's digging now. This is tough. Uh, she's been fortunate if she's left this red straight into the middle pocket. If she does take it on, it is a big shot. But she's not. She's going to want to play safe. Showing restraint. Danielle will get back to the table. But not in circumstances she would have wanted. In this kind of position, John, what, what are you trying to do? Are you just trying to hit the yellow and make things a bit awkward for Harriet? Yeah, I think if you can try and hit as full as possible and leave the white where the yellow is, it's um, sort of safe but it might possibly give you another shot back to the table. But, Best. yeah, landing there is obviously the worst possible outcome. Yeah, and this is now a golden opportunity for Harriet to get her first frame on the board. I think it's always catch-22, to be fair. I think, obviously, if she hits it 100 mile an hour and tries to fluke it, you might actually have a chance of doing it. Wasn't but, um, yeah, containing is normally the way, but and then when it goes wrong, it looks really bad. I was going to say, that was not the best positional shot from Harriet for the shot before. This eight ball obviously does cut in the middle, but it's slightly thinner than she would have wanted. I don't know if the in-offs were on with this shot, but if it is, once again, it's just something to think about that she didn't need to. She has avoided it, and the white stays safe. Um, it is going to be tough for a few more shots to happen, I think. Daniel Randall, two break in frame three. Has she made a ball? No. Nearly made one in the left middle, but just came to the top jaw. So it's going to be Harriet that comes to the table first. And these reds are all available. I think the main issue here, John, oh. was the one that she tried to play on there. Yeah. <laughs> I think also potentially the eight ball. Yeah. She leaves yeah. it further down the line. 
the eight ball is a tricky one as well. Um, but I think if she can cut it in, she needs to try and get rid of that. Because it does look like she'll probably have to leave it till last now and she'll be automatically on the eight ball. <coughs> yeah, she's just not pinpoint perfect with position at the moment and it nearly caught her out in the last frame. Oh, she's called a foul on herself. I mean, that is good to see, John. I mean, you don't get that in every sport, do you? No, no, of course not, yeah. It's, um, yeah, it's always good to see when someone owns up. She's obviously... Yeah, you just see it before. She just taps the white before she pushes through on it. But Danielle gets to the table. She may not have expected to, so... You know, mind, this might be a bit of a free hit here. It's just a question of your order. These yellows are all kind of clustered towards the eight, this kind of eight spot. It just makes things slightly tricky. She's got a nice angle here if she wants to just bump the eight out of the way and clear the space for the other two yellows. But she's got to be a little bit careful as to where she's sending it. Played it lovely. She might have the same shot again with the yellow into the bottom right hand corner she could potentially just play into the red that's next to it again I think the best thing is if she plays the one on the right hand side to go up the table if she's got the angle to miss the red I don't know if she's thinking about screwing this straight back I don't know if she's straight yeah. enough to do that she needs to leave one of these yellows to the last to get on the black she's had a change of heart needs to be quick oh, that was a little bit rushed if she's landed, then that's a straight plant. She has been fortunate. And I think it is by the pace that she's got down at. Yeah, go yeah. wedding clean. Very lucky. And now it's a case, once again, just make sure of your work here. Make sure she gets this white ball out for this yellow on the bulk line. Gets that to bounce. It's a little bit short. Shouldn't be an issue. I think she can go around the red on the right hand side. Just make sure of the pot, and I think she'll be on the yellow in some sort of form. It's just the pace of the table sometimes, John. You just don't want to overhit one of these. No, of course. I, I, I think she won't be an issue. That's a great shot. Just the angle going towards the cushion here, so just make sure she's got a shot. That looks fine. Once again, just make sure this eight ball and Daniel Randall will be 2-1 ahead and it's two good finishes that have put her there. She won't hold back, so that's po possibly a good a good sign for your opponent as well that she won't actually put you in a couple of snookers. She will go for the finish because she does believe in her ability. Um, obviously, it can work either way. But um, like you say, she can run a few frames in a row or she can miss a few frames in a row as well. And here it goes dry there. So opportunity for the... F it feels like for the first time in the match, Danielle's getting to the table first. It's a little bit awkward though, just because that yellow's sat on the cushion rather than being right over the pocket. It means that she's got work to do with the cue ball. Yeah, and with her being bridging as well, she can't do too much. Yeah. If I'm in Danielle's position here, I just make sure the pot and just play out. She has tried to force the cue ball out. It's not bad. She has got a long yellow. But the main thing was she made sure of the colour set. Yeah, she goes up the table. She's got the long yellow. And um, the rest of them down the table do go. So she just has to concentrate on the pot. Oh, doesn't want that white ball in. That's... A little bit unfortunate to go through that gap. But it will bring Harriet Haynes to the table with ball in hand and that's probably the worst case scenario. Because she immediately clears out that problem red. And Harriet can start running at these.
Oh, she missed it. Well, leniency of the pockets has definitely helped Harriet there. She just has to mind her work a little bit. Sounds really obvious to say that, but it does feel like a couple of these that Harriet's just played a little bit like nonchalant. But in the end, it's going to be a good counter clearance. So that in off from Daniel Randall. And at the moment, they can't be split. 15 minutes in, two apiece. Yeah, yeah, very happy, obviously, if you um, gave it me at the start of the weekend. But obviously, um, yeah, I'd have bit your hand off, to be fair. Um, disappointed this morning, but um, yeah, it's, it's hard to get from the high of last night to um, the low of the last 64 again. So, <laughs> yeah, I was lucky to get through that, to be fair. And then, um, yeah, my my steam ran out in the last 32 to be fair so um but yeah connor played well when he played me so no complaints in that it's just the way it goes sometimes it's when you come off of such a high as you said it's sometimes hard to get yourself up for that next game and because they come so thick and fast at the pro series it it almost hurts you a little bit by winning one yeah it, it obviously it takes all your energy the schedule gets pushed back for you as well and stuff like that Obviously playing at nine o'clock, um, I think my first chance against Josh was um, probably about half nine when I was five nil down. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was a bit tough, and um, yeah, luckily it t it turned in the second half of the match for me. But um, yeah, kind of made sure I didn't go any further. And just to give you a score update, obviously from the other semi-final, Amy Beecham's taking on Emma Cunningham. That one looks like it's going to go close. It is currently six five to Amy as we speak there is a little bit of time left on that clock as well and it's Emma to break so it's definitely still in the balance but once again Amy uh, my apologies Harriet is coming on the chase here a bit in this frame and compared to the last one she went for this isn't as open this is very tricky She's played a brilliant shot there, though, to open up both both yellows. So now it's going to be a question of that yellow on the right-hand side of the eight ball. Yeah, I don't know if this is going to be the shot to develop the um, the eight ball in the yellow. So I don't see any of the obvious shots. She went for it. She's not got it. She's still got on the yellow. It's actually not bad. Yeah, she's got the angle again to go into it, and she'll be guaranteed position if she plays it okay. She's gone for it. Yeah, that's pretty good. The only thing is she may have to leave it to a top corner. So... There will be a little bit of pressure on the next pot for Harriet, but oh, oh and that's right. Short. This is a little in between. This is a tricky, tricky yellow into the top left-hand corner. But she's down on it quick. And she's missed it. So yeah, I expected her to get that because there was nothing to do with the white ball. So she only had to just make sure of the pot, and she was guaranteed on the black. And if this red passes the yellow, this is a golden chance for Danielle again. Yeah, she just needs to stun into the red just to make sure she's on it. Um, oh. She has to put these two reds down the bottom end of the table, but this is no longer a simple clearance. <coughs> yeah, she if she can back her pointing ability, she has to take the long one now to leave the one in the middle because it will leave a perfect angle. Good curing required. Oh, straight in the yeah. heart of the pocket. It was the right shot, in my opinion. Very risky, but um, if you can back your pocket and believe. It's one of them that I think she had to go for gold a little bit. She needs an angle with this. Yeah, that's not a good shot. Dead straight and hampered. This is an ideal. Yeah, she didn't need to stun that up the table. Just a bit of side, and she would have left the perfect angle. Is that maybe not being fully used to the tournament conditions of the main table? Obviously, I know Danielle played a quarter-final on the table three, but 
I mean, early on in the tournament, obviously she was probably out in the outer arenas playing these earlier matches. But this is a pressure right ball. Right in the heart of the pocket. White ball. In regards to that, obviously you say, you know, you don't have to be perfect on every positional shot. How do you switch your mindset from that? Because obviously Danielle is in this mode of, I need to land perfect on the next ball. How do you kind of go about altering your game in a way that allows you to, you know, be a little bit lax on certain positional shots, but know that you're going to be fine? Well, I think you just got to have a confidence in your own ability, to be fair. Um, you, obviously, you know your strengths and weaknesses as a player. So um, you know what shots you can take on, um, how much you can push the boat out, to be fair, on each finish. So... Um, it, it depends on what stage you are in the frame as well. That was always a risky cannon. I think she was looking to try and catch that full. If she did, the white wouldn't have gone in off. But just catching it on that left-hand side means that she's lost the white ball again. And it's another opportunity for Harriet to counter clear. And that will frustrate Danielle a little bit because she did all the hard work in the last round to get her head again. And she's immediately let Harriet back in. Yeah, she's tried to be very positive for the cannon. A little bit unlucky with a couple of flicks, but it it was always on as well at the same time. Well, that's a, oh, I thought she was going to be hampered then, but she's absolutely fine. And this is dot to dot. Well, that wasn't the best shot. I think she's okay. I think she can just push through on this. Yeah. And there wasn't really too much to commentate on with that, John. <laughs> anyway, back to this match. Free all. Danielle, two break. Makes a ball. How's the split? Not ideal. A few things have gone awkward here, John. Yeah, it's not the best split unless um, one of the reds goes into the bottom right corner. Well, the only thing I was looking at is maybe she can get to the red into the middle. If she can, and then those two reds potentially plant, then actually there might be an opportunity here. She's gone for a cannon. That eight ball is going close. That actually might have helped her because <laughs> even if those reds don't go, it might be a big pocket. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a tricky one here, depending on them three reds on the left-hand side. Or even the four reds with the bottom left one as well. But yes. she has pulled up, so... She's played with restraint there. I don't blame her. It's a good shot. Harriet's got all sorts of work here. If she is going to attack in any shape or form. I think this could be a little drawn-out frame, just because where the black's gone as well. Yeah, you can see Harriet. It's almost had to slow down for this just to think about what she's doing. That's a clever shot. Just ties up all of Danielle's reds on the left hand side. There's not really too much Danielle can do with those so at the moment, so she's gonna look to just bump out a I have a problem red. Put it in front of the yellows. It's probably gonna be a little bit of cat and mouse in this frame now as to Who's going to make the first mistake? Harriet playing that double into the corner. I think she's potted it. Oh, she hasn't. Even so, I don't know if Danielle can just play the loss of turn. I don't think so from here. Is Danielle going for a cannon here? This is... Yeah, once again, plays restraint. That's a great shot. Oh, but Harriet's missed. Big mistake there. It's a big mistake. A uh, big misjudgment, to be fair, because they are very slidey cushions. But um, off the one cushion, you don't expect them to miss that. be interesting to see what Daniel does here, because, as I say, there's so much tied up. You, you almost don't know where to start. She's opted to try and put the white up the top end of the table. Needs that to run. It's not bad. 
Yeah, I think in that situation she probably could have got one of the reds out in the cluster, try to maybe play a little double and then play the loss of turn shot. Yeah, because Harriet can just immediately play that shot back. Yeah, because there's, there's no, there was no advantage with that. She don't really need the bottom right hand pocket if she got one of her reds out first by potting it then played the shot it might have been more advantageous yeah that's a pretty good shot from Danielle she just didn't want to leave the loss of turn for Harriet which she's avoided Harriet might take this opportunity just to yeah poke one of her other yellows out if she's left the gap Danielle might be able to do the same with the top red yeah I think that's the right shot to be fair Luke. Oh, she just needs to keep the red there but don't like that shot because it does leave Harriet the opportunity for a loss of turn potentially with it later on. Yeah, the only thing that's obviously helping her at the moment, she hasn't got a great yellow to actually do the loss of turn. But she does need to start chipping her balls out, Danielle, before becoming big favourite in this frame. I like the idea. I mean, even if she has to pot the red over the top right, of just playing that and then maybe using a shot to try and bump the yellow down towards the bottom and just poke out one of the other reds also in that cluster at the same time. Kind of do a bit of a two-in-one shot. Yeah. Yeah, just sort of leave it in the middle of the cluster. Yeah, because there's not going to be a lot that Harriet will be able to do from there. But I think if she don't get this right, she actually leaves the yellow on like she's just done there. I think it's touching or nearly touching, so... I think Danielle has got away with that, and if she has, actually, this is a little bit awkward for Harriet. That's a very good touch. I think the um, the stick shot again will be um, the question. Just stun it on and stick onto the yellow that she's next to. She needs to start getting a couple of these balls out. Yeah, she's going to get one of the reds out here. Unintentional loss and turn on the yellow. Uh, I think she's left Harriet this loss of turn, so Harriet is going to take advantage in this tactical exchange. Yeah. Oh, she has left the finish a little. Yeah, I was going to say that's a poor one to leave the, the red into the right middle. She's got the double after to develop the red as well. I just don't think the eight ball goes. No, but she might be able to bump out this red enough to play the loss of turn again oh can she get it here no she can't now she's got all the pressure on the world on her because all of Harriet's yellows now go she's got to basically try and make this in the top and then play the loss of turn on the black to yeah. try and get the pocket yeah this is a 1 out of 10 maybe this is a tough tough shot Bridging over. Yeah, She's close. Bridging. That's unlucky. That was a very good effort. But it is going to allow Harriet Haynes the opportunity to go into the lead for the first time. Oh, she hasn't potted it though. I was going to say that was the only thing that could go wrong. She either double kisses it and it goes behind the eight ball. Or she double kisses it and don't pot it. I don't know if Danielle can do anything with this red though. I think it's too close to the top cushion. If she can get a swing on it, then she might be able to get into the two yellows that are over the corner. Which is what she's tried. Has the black saved her? Loss of turn. Oh. If the blacks covered that yellow, she is extremely fortunate. Yeah, nice shot from Harriet. Yeah, just puts in Danielle back to bat. I'm just wondering if <coughs> Danielle comes off the top cushion here. Could she potentially kick the red towards the right middle? It's certainly on, but obviously with the eight ball so close to the, the yellow, sh she can't do nothing here. I'm just thinking if she gets it right, I'm wondering if that yellow would track down towards them as well. Or, but got unintentional side on it and she's bumped it out as well. That's even worse. So this will be the opportunity for Harriet Haynes. I'm assuming there's enough of a gap to get to the... Uh the yellow down the bottom left. Yeah, the way she's played it, I'm going to figure yes. Oh, she's overscrewed this though by 
quite some distance. She should make this, but she has put more pressure on herself. She has. Yeah, she's fine. And this felt like quite an important frame because it was the first one that really went scrappy, but it's going to be Harriet Haynes that gets herself over the line in it. And she takes the lead for the first time at 4-3. And we are back for three to Harriet Haynes as things stand, but she has dry broken, so Danielle is going to be first at the table here. And it's fair to say, John, this is a healthy opportunity. Yeah, I think if Danielle is going to come back in this match, she has to take this finish out. Um, slightly awkward straight away, but I think if she can recover from this shot, she'll. Um, have a great opportunity. Yeah, that yellow near the left middle pocket is a bit awkward for her, so... Yeah, it just loomed large, and I think she was focused on trying to cannon it, and she's missed the pot. Yeah, definitely. But once again, it's one of them that Danielle's got the better ball set, I'd probably say, out of the two. So there is work here for Harriet. But she's probably got back to the table a little bit earlier than she thought she would. Well, I think there's no, there's no balls that she has to break out. It's just the pattern play here that she has to work out. Just getting on the awkward balls and just making sure she pots them. Well, I think she's going to take out this one that's next to the red now. Oh, she's proved me wrong there completely. But she might be able to play for the one towards the bottom cushion now. It depends on her angle. I think that's what she's looking at. She is, but she's... Not got on it, so all of a sudden she's chasing here. Yeah, she left herself a bit straight on the straight on the previous shot. If she could have just bumped the red, she'd have been perfect. Good cut in the middle, but once again still in between. I think she has to take the one down the rail now to get on the one at the bottom. This is a tough shot because she's going to require the cue ball coming across twice as well for this yellow into the bottom left. Yeah, it's it's frame shot both ways, I think, here, if she gets it. She's missed it. And if she misses it, it should be frame over. This feels like the first frame, John, where Harriet's really gone for them and left Danielle everything in the open. In in the frames before, it's kind of felt like Danielle's either kind of <coughs> managed to fall over the line a little bit or she's had to take out a really awkward finish but this is the first real open opportunity I feel like she's had in the match so I think that's what makes it that little bit even more important just sticking the extension on it's yeah I feel like she don't have to take this first shot she can pot the one in the middle first but she has played it very well to be fair the only issue I see here is potentially if she's a bit straight yeah, she's just looking at it now. That was the only thing. She couldn't quite get close to the red, so it was just a little bit of a nuisance. She's just got to make sure she drops this in. Yeah, very good. Yeah, don't see no issues here with this finish. She's just got to make sure she comes back far enough. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, and it is going to be stun, stun from this point on. Or decides to use the side cushion. And it's going to be this eight ball to level the scores at four apiece. And neither player looks like they're backing down um, but I do I do think the uh, single elimination obviously suits her probably as well um, and then um, to be fair I've only really seen a little bit of the uh, challenger events sort of on Facebook with the updates to be fair 
So I, w I wouldn't be able to name you quarterfinal or semi finalist to be fair. Because, um, yeah, I, I don't watch much pool in my spare time. Um, yeah, I sort of play my games and then hide away, really. <laughs> I, I, I was going to say, have, have you ever kind of watched the pool, or is it just always been a thing that you're never really nonplussed about it, you just prefer playing it? That's a poor shot from Harriet to start things off. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just playing it, to be fair. Um, I started watching it a little bit to try and judge other matches with shot clock, match clock, etc., just to try and see what happens in other matches try and obviously like I said in um, my interviews yesterday try and learn what the best way is to go it's not but ideal it is very Daniel tough either. and Harriet's going to get straight back here but don't know if she's got any angle on this red if she doesn't then it's a bit tricky yeah she's made sure she's took the reds there just to control the frame yeah, it was two poor misses to get this started. A poor, f poor one from Harriet to catch the yellow, and also a poor one from Danielle to miss the one in the middle pocket. And Harriet is now going to have a bit of control here to contain. The only thing that saves Danielle here is potentially if it's touching ball. I don't know if it is. Don't believe the ref called touching ball there. I was going to say if she could, she could have just played the loss of turn, but. She's just checking to see if she can get through to this yellow. This is a bit of a horrible position for Danielle here because all of Harriet's reds are out in the open. I think she somehow needs to find a way to either get one off the table or... Yeah, there wasn't a lot she could do, so Harriet is going to get her opportunity. Yeah, I think she's just got hope for the best here with uh, with Harriet missing the finish. A little bit of a poor opener. I think she was maybe playing for the red into the middle first. So she's going to have to eliminate this one. So she's going to have to land on it with the next shot. Otherwise, it is an issue. And once again, she's right in the between. Yeah, I think she was looking at it in the bottom right. So um, just went a little bit too far. Great commentator's eye there, John, because I did not see that into the bottom <laughs> right at all. But it, it's just because she pointed her cue there, to be fair. I, di I didn't see it myself. It's um, a great pot. But oh, oh, she sat on the yellow. If she has, that is really unlucky. And you can see the way that she's dropped her head and walked away. I think we know what the answer is. But. Yeah, I don't even know if she can flick off it, to be fair. If she can't see any of the red at all, that is, this is horrible. She could potentially play off the side cushion and try and put it in the middle pocket, but from what she could have had, she wouldn't have wanted to end up here. No, she's not got it, and she's pushed one of the reds towards the top end of the table, which means that she, she does get back. She has got a bit of work there as well. But now this is an opportunity for Danielle to really get a foothold in this frame. Yeah, she's got to play the one on the left-hand side of the table to get up the table, and um, she'll leave the one on the left middle to get into the... Uh the two up the top left got to be a bit careful here with the eight ball that's fine leaving it to a lass is a bit risky yeah it, I don't know it's a bit of an awkward one because naturally but I think because she's straight on this one in the middle she'd probably want to just screw up take the one in the middle and oh yeah she, she's got to get rid of these down the end of the table now but where she is, she's going to be on the rail by the looks of it, which m makes it a lot more tricky. Yeah, it might mean she has to leave herself a slightly wider angle on that yellow. So a little bump on the knuckle wouldn't be, wouldn't be too bad. Oh, she's not put the cue through. And she's a bit in the middle here. I don't know if she can maybe see the one into the bottom left. If she can, she might be able to play that and just kind of tap into the yellow on the on the left hand side and no, I think she, she's she got a container somewhere she hasn't got a pot on maybe just flick off the yellow and try and go in between the two yellow oh, round the back of the two yellows just to time pressure's got to her there has she trebled it she has not and she's left this for Harriet 
Yeah, that red bus passed into the top left because she's quickly round. Yeah, she's perfect here. Just has to come down either side for the red into the middle pocket. That's absolutely fine. And Harriet somewhat got away with it. It's going to be this eight ball to see her go one in front again. Five four now. I don't think many of each of her have sort of had chances off the break. Well, so now this is a great chance for Mario. I Alice, think so you yeah. might have jinxed that, John. <laughs> um, but yeah, they've they've not been able to get into their flow too much. And they're sort of feeding off each other's scraps, really. Not this question for you, John. Would you have gone reds? I. Uh, uh, I looked at yellow straight away, to be fair. Yeah. Um, but now looking at it, they're both as easy as each other, to be fair. So there shouldn't be any issues. Just don't take it for granted. That's yeah, and Harry is <laughs> racing through this as things stand. Yeah, my first count was yellows no issues with the yellows and then when she took reds so I've looked at it and I'm like yeah there's prob probably no issues with reds to be fair so it, it would take a big mistake do you know what it's that thing always isn't it that we, we, we you kind of look for a ball set you don't look at both initially you kind of look at one and go oh yeah this is the one is she a uh, bit short? Uh, a little bit yeah I was surprised she just didn't run it through yeah that's what I thought she Played that with a little bit more restraint than I thought she was going to. And once again, she didn't need to stun that. Oh. This is all of a sudden, from nowhere, become a bit of a nightmare scenario. I think if she plays it in the middle, she'll run into the yellow and be perfect on oh, the Oh, that's a great pot, though. That's an unbelievable recovery shot from Harriet Haynes. That's not a full pocket as well. But she does what she needs to do and for the first time there's a bit of clearance between the two players in this match Harriet opens up a 6-4 lead but can Danielle Randall do the same she could break but no friends apart from the white ball that is harsh there is a little cluster on the left hand side of the table so that might come to her rescue Yeah, Harriet's going to opt to go yellows here. So they do go in the bottom left that that little cluster. So it just depends how attacking she wants to be. I think she's going into them here yeah. with the yellow in the middle. Yeah, I didn't like that shot. I'm going to be honest with you. I felt like she could have landed better on the one that was in the middle of the three and taken that later on. Yeah, like I said previously, she never holds back. Once there's a pot on, she will take that pot on. That will take that finish on. That was a great it effort, but it can be a curse, just like we've seen here, where it's given a, an easier chance to Danielle to counter clearance. And even if she doesn't counter clear from here, Danielle has got control of this table. Got to make sure she isn't counted out by the shot clock here. Calls for the extension. Don't blame her. Yeah, wants to make sure this pot hasn't but flukes it. Yeah, she, she's she got to make sure she's taking control of the frame. Tap on the table there as she walks round. I think quite ironic. Because there is enough time for her to win two frames, if not three. That's a great shot. And she's got right into the mix of the reds here, so she's given herself that opportunity now. And she might have the angle to cannon the the red next to the yellow. She's got to be careful here. It's not worse. The only thing is she's going to be using that final red of the three to go into that red, which is not ideal. As I say, yeah, she had to try and pick an angle there. She doesn't look bad on this red at all. No, she can stun into it, not a problem. And she'll have the one in the top pocket. Just needs to play it confidently. Well, did she play for it in the middle? She did. 
that was a bit of a bizarre choice for me. She could have easily played that cannon and had the worst case scenario of the red there. You can puff of the cheeks. Big shot now to try and land on this red. Yeah, she tried to force a cue ball through. Hasn't got there. What she left for Harriet. And she might have left the angle to go into the pack as well. I think she has. This is. Uh, she might be a bit straight. It could well go this yellow, to be fair. Well, she's had a look at it and she's turned away from it, so I'm going to figure it doesn't. It's still tough for Harriet to be able to get the cannon here. Oh. No, or maybe I maybe she did think it went. I think the yellow goes with a lot of side, but obviously the red is a lot more safer. Um, she's just got to play safe here, Daniel, behind the black. Yeah, Daniel needs to get coverage with his eight ball. That's the one. If she's got it. I think she has. I think if she's left the pot, the yellow does go into the pocket where the white is now. Yeah, Harriet's just going to contain the situation. That's a good shot. I think if the red goes into the top pocket now, she's got to take it on. Instead, she's just left distance. It's not the worst, no, but... It's not about containing. But Harriet is going to have a shot here to get over the line, and it's a tough one. She's digging on this as well, so that makes things even tougher. Well, she's just to try to try to roll it in. Bit of a bizarre shot for me, but she's not had a bad result. And Danielle is under huge pressure here now. I think she's playing this to top corner. This is do or die. And that is disaster for Danielle. Yeah, I think the shot into the middle was the right shot because she would have went up the table natural angle to be on the one in the middle. And I think on fair reflection, John, I think Harriet has just edged this simply on shot selection. Yeah, just a few less mistakes as well, to be fair, in the um, in the finishes. Well, if she can't pop this to the top corner, actually, there might still be life in this match yet. She's got to make sure of this. Has it reached? It has, and that will be that. Harriet Haynes runs out a 7-4 winner over Danielle Randall.